here is some discrete numerical data. Um, this is number of people in a household. Now remember that's numerical but because we can't have a decimal place of a person, we can't have 1.756 of a person living in a household, um, there can only be certain number of answers so this is discrete. So we draw a frequency histogram again for this, uh, but we draw it slightly differently in where uh, those numbers fall on the scale. And I'll show you what I mean. So here are my axes. And again, along the top, I'm going to put the frequency. But this time, just to show you the difference, what I might do is put the percentage frequency. Percentage frequency. Now it's exactly the same as in the previous example where I uh, graphed this column, except that what I'm doing this time is just graphing the percentage. So that's our vertical axis, and along the horizontal axis we put the variable that we're talking about. So in this case it's the number of people in the household. Now this scale here goes from 1 to 8, so let's just put some of those in there. And along the top, I've got something like 4 here being my lowest and 20 being the highest. So I might do these in increments of 5. Actually, there's a 24.44 there, so we'll need to go up to at least 25 along the top here. 25%, and I can still break them down into 5s below. So there they are. And what I might do just to make this a bit uh, clearer in an exam is I'd break this down again. So I drew, draw the four little dashes in there that break that up. So these would represent 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 being the sort of major category there. Now you don't necessarily need to do this, but it will help you make your graph accurate. Um, and it will help the examiner see that you're going along the right line along here. Again, rule these and make them evenly spaced. My freehand drawing is pretty terrible. So the number of people in the household with um, the number of households with one person in the household had a frequency of seven, but we're graphing the percentage frequency. So that is a percentage frequency of 15.56. So that is just above the 15 point, about there. Now, as I said in the last example, because this is discrete data, um, we draw where the lines cross a little differently um, on the vertical, um, uh, sorry, on the horizontal axis. Now, what I mean by that is if, if I drew this 15 line here like that and went down, what we'd be saying is everyone with from zero up to one, but not including one person, had a frequency of this. And that's not right. We're saying people who had one person living in the household, one and one only, live there. We're not saying people who had 0 0.76, etc., etc., um, all of the decimal places between 0 and 1, because we can't have any of those occurrences because this is discrete data. That doesn't make sense. So rather than drawing it like that, we draw the bar um, over the 1 point, and it falls halfway between that and the uh, next space. So one goes along here halfway between these two. And the two one, which had a frequency of 24.44, so that's up here, goes halfway between the um, halfway between the one and the two and the two and the three. Because what we're saying is this is exactly two. We're measuring here to here, we're measuring the, the two point here. So dead centre of this two marking along our horizontal axis is where we draw our um, bar part. And dead centre of the one along here is where we draw this bar part. So the next one there, three, which had a frequency of 8.89, which is just below the nine dash, so it's about there, goes halfway between the two point and the three point saying this is just three this is exactly three all of these people fall right on this um, part of the scale and again we do the same for these other ones and there they are filled in now because this is numerical data these walls are still touching 
these walls so each of the bars still touch the bar next to it but rather than drawing these lines from here to here and I'll just do this in another color so rather than saying the bar goes from 5 to 6 and talking about everything that occurs between these two data points so rather than having a bar like that what we have instead is the bar saying I'm talking about the data point 5 which is dead center here and so I'm saying all of these people are represented in this bar by the the point 5 um, so people with five uh, households with five people in it that had this frequency and I'm not talking about four point something either side and five point something up here because it's discrete data we can't have that and I'm just going to show you in contrast what a bar chart looks like. And this is the version that we use for um, categorical data. So here's a table that we did in the previous video uh, where we asked a group of people their eye colour. Now, giving these answers, hazel, brown, blue, green, that is categorical data. Now, this graph looks quite similar to a histogram, a frequency histogram except uh, it is quite different it has a different name it's called a bar chart and the uh, bars don't touch and I'll show you what I mean so again along this column where you put our frequency or our percentage frequency let's do frequency in this example so I'm talking about graphing either this column or this column um, and in this example I'm going to do this one and along the horizontal axis we do the variable that we're graphing so in this case eye color now if um, I can put these in any order along here in the table they appeared hazel brown blue green so I could put them hazel brown blue green going along the scale but because they're categorical data if I wanted to do them differently and say for example blue hazel green brown there'd be nothing against doing that because they're categorical data they're not in any particular order going along the bottom here now in some cases it might make sense to put them in, in order for example if I had asked you um, how much you agree with a certain statement it wouldn't make sense to put um, you know if there were five variables of agree like strongly agree agree neutral disagree strongly disagree it wouldn't make sense to jumble those all up you would want to put them in some sort of order, order either going from agree to disagree having neutral in the middle or the reverse of that but something um, like this there really isn't any um, necessary way that you need to put them going along the horizontal axis but for this example I'm going to draw them as so because that's how they appear in the table um, so this first one here um, I need to put um, first of all I need to put a scale going along my frequency and we range from 3 up to about 10 so let's just go up by 1 along here and we'll have 1 2 3 so there's my vertical scale now this first one here hazel had a frequency of 10 so that is going to look something like this there it is hazel with a frequency of 10 that next one there brown had a frequency of 8 so that was like this next one blue had a frequency of 9 again you would use a ruler for these and make sure that they matched up with where your scale was because if you got this slightly off you would lose the marks for it and green there had a frequency of 3 now because these have nothing to do with each other hazel does not sequentially come before brown or something like that they they are categories they are completely separate and that for that reason they're not touching when you have numerical data and it's going up by uh, a certain scale along this uh, horizontal axis and it makes sense to have it going from lowest number to highest number things like that that's when the bars are touching because they do relate to each other they're sort of the next one in the group is the one that the bar would be touching but there's there's no mathematical reason for hazel to be right up next to brown because that's not next in the along the number scale that's just a different category so they do look very similar bar charts and frequency uh, sorry frequency histograms this is a bar chart for categorical data um, and the bars are not touching so the reason I've drawn that um, in this video is so that you can see um, how they differ because they do look very similar